Hello there and welcome to a video that I am going to call, it's like it's going to be a, it's going to be a by international break series called The Shape of the Top 6. Now, before I get started on this video, obviously I'm going to find where I am on my app to find the league table and that, but also if you hear any scratching or meows of any sort, my cat is having a bit of a mad one as they tend to do if you are a cat owner of your own, then you'll know every now and again they like to go a bit nuts whenever they want to and yeah, that's just what's happening now. So, anyway, let's get into this one right now. Now, what the theme of this sort of series is going to be, every international break, because they come quite few and far between, but still often enough to be completely annoying for the, you know, for the club football fan, um, what it means for me is I'm just trying to think of ways that I can analyse other teams in the Premier League, but ones that are quite close to us as well. Instead of going up and doing all 20 teams in the Premier League, I may do a relegation one later on in the season, but for now, we get to have a good look at the top six in the Premier League as it stands and have a look at who we think is going to be in the top six by the end of the season. Now, let me know what you think or who you think is going to be in the top six by the end of the season, looking at the games as they have been right now, because it's early on. There's a lot of things that are obviously being said by a lot, about a lot of clubs as well already, but it's only four games into the Premier League season. A lot of different things can happen to each different club as the season goes on. But it also gives us a good marker of where teams are right now, and when we go back and we, and we get to have a look at the end of the season, we can then sort of look at the patterns throughout each of the videos in this series to see where these teams have placed, basically. So let me know who you think is going to be in the top six by the end of the season. Now, for me, the only team that, you know, when you when you think of the top six normally, you're thinking uh, Manchester United, you think Chelsea, Arsenal, Liverpool, Manchester City, and I'm pretty sure I'm forgetting one there here as well, uh, Tottenham as well. That would be, that's your top six, your big six as they are normally called. And some of these teams have started like a house on fire and some of these teams really have not clicked into gear at all. So there's a lot of different things that can happen over the course of a season. Let's not forget, we've got 34 games left of this season to go. So it's by no means, you know, I'm not saying right now that this is exactly how the game is going to, uh, how the game, how the top six is going to finish. That's not what's happening right now. This is all just how I think the, the season could pan out. So in the top six, as it is currently after four games played, it's Liverpool, Manchester City, Leicester, Crystal Palace, Arsenal and Everton. That is the top six as we know it right now. Now, what I predict and what I feel right now, could you not tear up the carpet? That'd be great. That'd be awesome. You want to keep tearing the carpet? She's going to keep tearing the carpet up. That's fine. No worries. We're going to get it replaced soon anyway. So for me, I look at this Premier League table right now and I look at Tottenham are in ninth. Manchester United are in 8th. Have we got anyone lower? Chelsea are in 11th. So they've fallen a little bit further. I think they, they drew or something at the, uh, in the last Premier League game. Anyway, who do I think is going to miss out on top 6 by the end of the season? <sighs> Personally, and people will probably think there's a bias in this one. Let's not forget, actually, by the way. Chelsea, Tottenham and Man United, 8th, 9th and 11th respectively, are all on the same points. There's just goal difference that separates them. So, they're all on five points. I personally feel, in no particular order, I think the top six will be this. Liverpool, Manchester City, I think it will be Tottenham, I think it will be Chelsea, that's four so far. I think it will be Arsenal, and I genuinely think it will be Leicester. Now that means it would be... Manchester United dropping out of the top six. Now, if I've if I've read that right, so I want to go over it again. Tottenham, Chelsea, Arsenal, Liverpool, Manchester City, and Leicester. So that means that Manchester United drop out. Now, why do I think that Manchester United will drop out? I am a Liverpool fan. Now, I'm going to try and approach this in the most non-biased way that I can and just go off the facts that we have in front of us, right? And I know that people might turn around and say, you're a Liverpool fan. You cannot be unbiased when it comes to Manchester United. And I totally appreciate that thought. And if you really, if you want to go with that one, then that is absolutely up to you. I respect it, and that's fine. I'm not going to question you on that. But I hope that the reasons I put forward, which are going to be off the top of my head, um, hopefully 
they will show that it is I am trying to be unbiased. Now, in terms of Manchester United and the rest of the top six that I've put in there, what do the rest of them have that Manchester United don't right now? Even Leicester have got a player in Jamie Vardy who is capable of scoring between 15 and 20 goals. They are also capable of scoring goals from elsewhere. Now, the most likely goal scorer right now, like and looks like a constant threat all of the time, is young Daniel James. And don't get me wrong, Daniel James is scoring some absolute crackers. Really, really good goals. The one that he scored in uh, against Chelsea, it was a nice one, and his debut goal as well, but it was a nice little low drive, I think it was. It wasn't like the most powerful finish, but it was a good goal. The one against Crystal Palace where he, he just nicely lofts it up into the top corner. A good goal as well. And then he scored another one against Southampton, which was an absolute rocket from the top of the box on the left-hand side. Very, very good goal. The constant here is, Daniel James is scoring goals. Where are the rest? All right, Martial scored against Wolves, I think it was. Um, I can't, I think it was anyway. Yeah, I think it was Martial scored against Wolves. Not entirely sure. Anyway, regardless of that, Martial will probably get tasked with playing down the middle when he's back fit. Rashford will probably go on one wing and Daniel James will go on the other one. Now, it depends because what happens now is where's the depth? Where's the guarantee of having the 15, 20 goals that a Jamie Vardy gives you? And people may laugh, and say, you know, but Jamie Vardy is a constant threat in front of any defence, getting in behind defences. He's got the know-how and the experience of how to get in behind pretty much any defence. He's a Premier League winner, but even now, what, four or five years removed from that, he's still doing the business. However old he is, I can't remember if he's like 32 or 33, whatever, he's still got that dangerous pace. Everybody else in the top six has got goal scorers almost everywhere. Arsenal have got goals. It, the, the only thing that lets them down is their defence, but I think that they will outscore a lot of teams. Once they get clicking, once they get their formation sorted, they will be absolutely fine. And it'll just be against maybe some of the top of t the, the top of the league teams that might that will suss them out. That is my opinion. Manchester City will probably go on like the juggernaut that they are and the players that they've got and they can score from almost anywhere in their team. Uh, Tottenham, while they've not necessarily started the season very well, they've got a proven goal scorer in Harry Kane. They've got goals in Hyung Min Son and Lucas. They've got goals in Christian Eriksen as well. And they've got um, they've got providers as well. Liverpool, we've got our providers. Um, I can't remember who else I talked about. Chelsea. Chelsea, they've got a young team, but Tammy Abraham looks like he's starting to find his way. He's starting to feel comfortable. Mason Mount is starting to provide very well as well. Pulisic, or Pulisic, however you say his name, he will probably come good as well. He's getting used to the league. He's, they've got players that will score goals from them as well. Olivier Giroud is a, is a threat when he can come in and he can score goals as well. Manchester United lack creativity and they lack proven goal scorers. Now, these are players that might come up when they come up against the top six, because we, you know, we all tend to play high lines and we play at our football. We don't cater to other attacking teams. Man United might actually come up and you know play very well, but against the other 14 te 13 teams in the league, that is possibly where they will come unstuck because they will sit low, they will sit back, and they will counter. They will do what Palace did. They'll do what Wolves did, do what Southampton did, and score these free goals, or well-played goals, like the one uh, Jordan Ayew's against Crystal Palace, uh, for Crystal Palace against United. It was a very, very good goal. The defensive, they, they have reinforced in defence. Probably not enough, though. David De Gea isn't the goalkeeper he was a couple of seasons ago. The rest of the defence isn't, isn't necessarily up to like a Harry Maguire, Wan Bissaka sort of uh, caliber. The midfield, they need to sort out what's going on there. Is that midfield going to come back and defend? Or are you going to have some of your midfield defend, some of it go and be creative? There doesn't seem to be a great deal of planning in the way that Manchester United play. That is just my opinion. I look, I'm trying to look at it from how are they trying to play? How are you feeding your front three? How are you feeding your front players? How are you defending? 
doesn't seem to be a lot of defending going on, doesn't seem to be a lot of planning going on, and I always say, if you win your midfield battles, and I say this for Liverpool as well, if you win your midfield battles, there's a high chance that you will go on and win that game. Man United seem to dominate possession quite a bit. They're just not defensively alert enough. And whether that comes from Solskjaer himself as a manager, and whether he will make the cut this year, are they really willing to wait until January to possibly make some other signings? I don't know. January window is so... The last big signing in the January window, I would say, would be Virgil van Dijk for Liverpool. You know, you can do it. They're expensive, and the transfer fee of a Van Dijk has probably upped the transfer fee of every other defender, you know, in, in the world. Those of that calibre, like a Koulibaly, even after his mistakes at the weekend, he's still a quality defender. Quality defenders, quality midfielders, guys like Fabinho, you know, guys like that don't come cheap. Now, we did get, you know, Fabinho at a, a very, very good price, but for Manchester United to get into that top six, they've got to overcome Leicester, in my opinion. Leicester play better football, Leicester have a plan, and Leicester have got the players to carry out that plan. Leicester lost Harry Maguire to Manchester United and Leicester looked better defensively. What does that tell you? Doesn't necessarily come down to the personnel. And I've spoke a lot about personnel for Manchester United. It's gonna come down to the plan. And if you don't look like you have a plan, something that you can stick to week in, week out. I remember when Jurgen Klopp came to Liverpool, the first thing that you could see in the first couple of games he had a plan. He knew how he wanted to play. Didn't necessarily have the personnel to do it. We now have the personnel, the personnel to do it. We've got the manager to do it and the system and the plan to go and carry out what the manager wants. Which is why we look like we're getting results week in, week out and why we're European champions now. Been to two Champions League finals in two seasons. Manchester United need to get a plan. Whether you have the personnel or not, you need to have a plan. That is it. For us to get into top four years ago, we did that without Virgil van Dijk. We did it with having a back line that included Dejan Lovren, Joe Gomez, Joel Matip. Joel Matip's fantastic now as well. Joe Gomez, brilliant as well. Lovren, I differ on that one. But it's not necessarily about the personnel. It's about the plan, the plan in place. If you get a good plan in place, it will take you further and then you can bring in the personnel. Bringing in personnel is easier when they can see that you have a plan. If you don't look like you have a plan, personnel are going to go, what are you going to do with me? What am I going to do for you? Are you going to want me to, do you want me to come up with the plan? You're the manager, you're the coach, and you're the coaching staff. You should be coming up with the plan. Where's the plan? Some people are saying that there is a plan, there is a plan to Oli. They can see it, oh, I can see a clear plan to what Oli wants to do. It's just the players aren't doing it. I don't see a plan at all. All I see, and I've said this to a couple of mates who, one of them's a United fan and he kind of agreed. I said, it's almost as if the players have to go out and he goes, right guys, you guys up front, you score the goals, enjoy yourselves. Like, it, where's, where's the rest of the game plan? That is what it looks like to me. It doesn't look like, you know, they can score like the first goal against Southampton, score the first goal, great, cool. What do you do after that? It's like the players just went, get in, we've got the goal. Don't really know what to do now. Um, defend? Nah, can't be. Nah, don't. Don't think so. No, don't feel like it. Like there just does not seem to be a plan, and that is why I feel Leicester will break the top six over any other team. I think that Leicester will do it. I think they've got the midfield. I think they've got the forwards. I think they've got the creativity. I think they've got the defence and the goalkeeper to do it as well. And I think that is purely why I think that Leicester will make it into the top six over Manchester United. And again, that is just my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Who do you think is going to make it into the top six at the end of the season? I will come back and review this video when we have another international break. Whenever that one is, I'm going to dread it anyway. But I'll review it then. We'll go back over, see where all the teams are at that point, and do another prediction. See if it's in line with what I've just said. Here in this video let me know if you've enjoyed this video and if you have agreed or disagreed with any points please do get your thoughts in the comments below let's keep it respectful if we can i've tried to be respectful 
and I think I have been as well. So let's keep it respectful. We can have a conversation in the comments below, but get your thoughts in and let me know what you're thinking. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, please do like it and subscribe if you are new around here. Thank you once again, and I'll catch you later.